free to go ahead and um, tell us where you're from. Like, where are you dialing in and, and watching us, um, watching this class from? So, um, first of all, I want to welcome everybody here and let you know that we are recording this video, recording this class. It will be available on michaels.com starting tomorrow in case you want to refer back for some additional ideas. Uh, we are going to keep everybody's microphone on mute and that enables us to go ahead and you know, let Megan teach the class. And if you have any questions, please feel free to include them over in the chat session. And I will be your translator. I will go ahead and send the questions over to Megan to get some answers for you uh, throughout the class. So our goal today is to have fun. We are gonna learn some new tips and techniques for decorating uh, cookies and getting creative and, and just enjoy the class. So Megan. Yay. Well, hi everyone. It's so good to be back. Thank you for hanging out with us on this Monday morning. Um, today, I am just going to show you some things that you can do with the Sweet Tooth Fairy Meltables. Now, these are available exclusively in Michael's and they are so delicious. We have several different colors. Um, we have more colors and flavors coming out. But if you haven't had a chance yet to try them, I highly recommend going by the store and picking some up. So some of you might be wondering, like, what are meltables? Um, so they are these little wafers. They come in a bunch, again, a bunch of different colors and flavors. And they're actually a confectionery coating um, made from sugar, milk, vegetable oils, flavorings and colors. So technically they're not chocolate, um, which is helpful because that means that we don't have to temper them like you would real chocolate. So these just work really, really well in the microwave or over a double boiler. Um, and again, we're not having to heat and cool chocolate. We're not having to temper it. We have these awesome meltables that we can use. So. There's so many, so many fun things that you can do with them. And you might've noticed there wasn't a long list of uh, items that you necessarily like needed for this class, just because I wanted to just talk with you through some things that you could do with them, um, with things that you might already have in your pantry, or you know, maybe if you're at the grocery store, you can just pick up really conveniently and just be creative and have fun. So. The first thing I'm going to show you how to make is this cake batter popcorn. So super yummy. It's so easy. You are going to be shocked at how easy it is. So what I've done is you just, again, pick up some popcorn from your um, grocery store. You can buy it pre-popped. You can get some and pop it in the microwave if you need to. Um, and then all you're going to do is you're going to take about a half a cup of these meltables to about five cups of popcorn. So five cups of popped popcorn to about a half a cup of meltables. And all we're going to do is we're going to measure them out. We're going to pop them into the microwave and give them a little stir, make sure that they get nice and smooth. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we will continue the recipe. Now you're gonna see one of the ingredients that I'm gonna about, about to use after we have the chocolate, the meltables melted is a cake batter mix. So it's just, Again, at the grocery store or at Michael's, pick up a box of cake mix. And I just have about a half a cup in here. One of the things you'll see as we go through some of these um, ideas is that unlike cooking or <laughs> baking, um, it's, there's not really like, you know, measurements that are precisely exact that you have to do. You can kind of just, eyeball it. You, if you think it needs more, you can add a little more. Um, but as best as I can, I will give you the, I'll give you the measurements for it. So I put these in for about 30 seconds. I tend to start out melting them 
and smaller increments just because what you don't want to do is heat them up too much because what happens is then it seizes and then they get like the multiples kind of get hard and chunky and then you have to add some oil in to kind of smooth them out but the multiples in and of themselves just as they are are very very smooth um they they're awesome you'll see here in in just a minute what what i'm talking about so they're heating up five cups of popcorn about a half a cup of cake mix um this is just vanilla but if you wanted to use a different kind that would be totally fine now i'm just gonna stir sometimes what happens with the meltables is you'll get them out of the microwave and they'll still kind of look like they're a little bit clumpy but as you mix them <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> excuse me um as you stir them you'll see that they kind of begin to melt a little bit more so thus far i've had it in for about one minute which is what the directions recommend on the back but i know every microwave is different and so i just again i like to start at with smaller increments so i'm just going to put it in for about 30 more seconds and then they're going to be ready ready to go um are there any questions thus far <laughs> i know there hasn't been anything earth shattering that has happened yet but in case there are i'm happy to answer them while our multiples are still melting we good we're good no questions okay. awesome all right so here we go these are going to be nice nice and melty okay so again five cups popcorn about a half a cup of meltables and i'm just going to pour it over the top of the popcorn and i'm going to take my spatula kind of give it a good Good toss. I just realized my bowl is a little little <laughs> for this. So we'll have a little bit of spillage over, but that's fine. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cake mix. Again, it's about a half a cup, and then I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top. And then you might have noticed, forgot to mention some of my favorite things ever in the kitchen are these gloves. I use these all the time. So you just, if, if you don't mind your hands getting dirty, that's great. You don't have to wear gloves, <laughs> but I like to wear them. And then all I'm doing is tossing the meltables that we just poured over the top along with the cake mix that we also just poured along with the top. And then I'm just taking, we have these darling sprinkles. They're available also at Michael's. And then I'm just sprinkling some over the top. And then I am going to keep kind of working it in until you can kind of feel that there's no more like powder from the cake mix on the bottom, or you don't feel any of the meltables um, still along the sides. And then you've got yourself some delicious cake batter popcorn super easy i mean all in all honestly you can throw this together in as long as it takes to you know make popcorn in the microwave and melt your meltables which is all of probably five minutes and you can see you've got some delicious popcorn so the other one i wanted to show you is very similar and it's actually for all you chocolate lovers out there <laughs> and all i've done so i again i baked baked i popped i popped about five cups of popcorn i'm just gonna dump it into a bowl and then this one is one where honestly i just i winged it i was like hey i'm just gonna add a little bit of this we have these delicious cocoa meltables so these have cocoa in um in the ingredients as so it tastes like chocolate um and they're so good so all i'm gonna do is in fact i'm gonna use the the already warm little dish <laughs> and i'm gonna use that to melt these ones even though there was a little bit of the white it's they'll be fine once we get mixed 
together. So yeah, so with this, I, you know, we're all creatives, right? That's why we're here. That's why we're, we're Michael's customers. We love to create. We love to think outside the box and do new things. So, so earlier this morning, as I was doing some last minute pulling together of um, ingredients and just tools and whatnot, <laughs> I thought, hey, I'm just going to kind of whip this, you know, cookies and cream popcorn together and we're going to see how it turns out. And as it turns out, it's, turn, it's pretty good. It's really good. <laughs> so making pop, pop. Some of your favorite yeah. flavors. Pardon? What are some of your favorite combinations? Oh, okay. So I do, I love the cake batter so much. Um, you know, I know that technically you're not supposed to like eat batter because of salmonella <laughs> and all that stuff. But I, I think if everyone's being honest with themselves, we all lick the batter. We all eat some of the dough. So the cake batter is one of my most favorite. <laughs> um, I do love the cookies and cream as well. But this is kind of what I wanted to go into a little bit as I show you some of these other things that I'm going to do with you guys today. I would just, next time you are walking down the aisles of your grocery store, think, I'm going to make an over-the-top batch of popcorn. And I'm going to look for anything that I like to eat or like to snack on. And I'm going to top it in. And we're going to make a cool batch of a crazy mix. And we're just going to see how it turns out. It might be totally just the best thing you've ever, ever tried. And it might be a little much, you know? <laughs> I don't know. But that's kind of how a lot of these things come about. A lot of recipes and creations come about for me is just thinking a little bit outside of the box looking at different ingredients or products that are already available and seeing what I can do to kind of, you know, add them together and, and uh, get creative. So as I was babbling on, can you see how I'm just stirring this? Okay, so this is the cocoa flavor. And then what I've done here is I took some of these sandwich cookies and I pulse them in like a food processor, processor. And so they're like a really fine, you know, like a fine crumb. So all I'm gonna do is pour this over. Again, it's about a half a cup. And I should say, I feel like people have strong feelings about being a salty and sweet lover. I am. So I apologize if you are not on that bandwagon because most of this stuff is a little bit salty and sweet, but I just think it is such a fun combination. Okay, so you can see I just poured it over the top and then I'm kind of just tossing it like I did with the cake batter one. And then I'm going to take this uh, food processed sandwich cookie and I'm just going to drizzle it over the top. And again, I'm gonna kind of toss it. Can you, oh, okay, yeah, you can see in this camera angle. So great. Now, one other idea I just had as I was doing this is taking some of the, um, the meltables, the white ones, and kind of just breaking them up along with, I'm gonna put in some of these sandwich co cookies. I'm gonna crunch them together. Um, but you could even take some of these meltables and I'll, I'll do it here. I'm just gonna grab some new gloves and kind of like smash those and break them into little pieces. So you'll have your popcorn, you'll have the smooth cocoa meltable that's, you know, that's covering the kernels. You'll have a little texture from the food processed sandwich cookies. And then we're going to put some chunks of these in there. And then you'll have a nice little snap from the meltable that will also be in there. So I'm a huge texture person. And, um, and I just, I like having lots of different textures in, in all the things. So, so like I said, oftentimes create, these creations just come from thinking about what already exists out there as far as ingredients and treats and then kind of mixing them all together. So you can see, I'm honestly, I'm just no rhyme or reason, just breaking them up in chunks. 
knowing full well that if I were serving this at my house, my kids would be fighting over who got the biggest chunk of cookie, but that's okay. And then, okay, so see these multiples? We're just winging this, friends. We're just making this up right now. So I have some parchment paper and I'm just gonna put it, let's see, let me see that, okay. I'm just putting some on the parchment paper and then some on the top. We're just gonna kind of take this spatula. If I had thought ahead of time, thought of this ahead of time, I would have grabbed a rolling pin. Just kind of crunched them up a little bit, but this rubber, rubber spatula seems to be doing the trick. Okay, so we've got, you could also probably cut them. So see, we just have some chunks. So we're just gonna put those in. And then as soon as I'm done putting those in, it's almost like they got scored, which works because I can just kind of break them apart as we're doing this. And then I'm just gonna fold them in. And look forward to eating this after the class. <laughs> so let's see. So you can see, you can see some of these big chunks. You can see how the food processed crumbs attached to the chocolate coating. You can see some of the cookie chunks and some of the meltables. So again, Nothing super precise in terms of measurements or ingredients or whatever, but just kind of here a little, there a little, whatever. I think that, I think that would be a delicious little fun thing to bust out for a party. The other thing I should say is, especially with, um, especially like with this cake batter one. So, as I was mentioning, we have, I'm going to set this down here. We have so many different colors of multiples that are available. So with the cake batter one, um, you could pick, you know, say it's your, you know, a, a birthday party and you're trying to coordinate all the colors. Well, you could obviously just do it as is, use the vanilla cake mix. It's obviously going to give a pretty white look to your popcorn. Um, and then you could just choose sprinkles that like matched your theme and you could fold those, those in. The other thing you could do is you could use colored multiples. So again, if you're trying to match a party theme or if it's for a graduation and it's, it's, you know, your school colors are blue and green or whatever it is, just use the colored multiples so that then your popcorn will have just that little bit of festive flair that matches your, um, whatever it is that you're going for. So the, mel the colored meltables all have this really delicious, just like vanilla flavor. So it's not gonna affect the flavor of like the cake batter if you did choose to make the cake batter one again. Um, but as you just saw, um, you don't have to use cake batter. You can just take the meltables and get it nice and thinned out in the microwave and pour it over the popcorn and it will also coat that so um so yeah so there's a lots of different little options when it comes to popcorn now I probably I won't show you this one just because it's pretty much the exact same thing we just did but it's with um with these little square rice square cereals so again you can find these anywhere they have different kinds of you know wheat and rice and whatever whatever flavor you think you'd wanna go with. But what I did here was I actually grabbed some brownie mix. So good. I I, I'm realizing I like batters <laughs> in my, and so, um, so this is brownie mix just from a box from the grocery store and same, same thing. You just, I just put the cereal in a bowl and I poured the cocoa meltables over the top of it, gave it like a nice little toss. And then I just sprinkled the 
brownie mix over the top and tossed it. And it's really good. If you like chocolate and if you like brownies, it's, it's Megan, really delicious. Do you, any, yeah. do you add any flavor oils to the chocolates? So yes, you just want to make sure that they are oil-based, um, oil-based flavorings. Otherwise, the, if you use any kind of like water base, it'll seize, seize up. So yeah, you definitely could. Um, we do have flavors coming out later this year for the holidays and they're going to be super, super delicious, but absolutely you can. In fact, one of the other things I was thinking about was, um, especially with like, with this brownie one that I did and with the cake batter one, like how fun to go to the grocery store and just go in the like, you know, the instant gelatin aisle where it has all the different fun flavors. I mean, there's cheesecake, there's banana, there's pistachio, there's chocolate, there's butterscotch. Like there's so many options of fine flavored powder, right? That in this instance, we used um, like food processed cookies. In this one, we used cake batter. So we were using those to add to them to get you know, the flavor profile that we wanted. This was brownie mix, um, but you could totally use like an instant pudding mix as well and just know that obviously you're not gonna add milk to it and make pudding, but you're gonna use it and you're just gonna, you're just gonna play around. Um, one of the ideas I had um, as I, again, this morning as I was doing this, I was like, oh, it'd be so fun. Like, what about this flavor? You know, I was thinking, what if you got like cheesecake pudding mix and then you got like freeze dried raspberries um, or freeze dried strawberries. And then you could get like the little honey graham cereal and kind of throw that in together with some of the meltables. It would be like a cheesecakey kind of little treat. <laughs> so the possibilities truly are endless um, when it comes to what you can mix with the meltables with, you know, cereal, snacks, treats, chips, pretzels, whatever it is to kind of just give it like a little bit of a unique uniqueness. So Megan, so we that, have I hope that answered your question. Yeah, yes. Are you using butter popcorn? Is there any thoughts about whether or not it should be butter or plain? I mean, normally in my life, I say always use the butter, <laughs> but in this instance, I would say I would just do plain or like super light just because you don't want that. Well, you might, I would suggest it probably wouldn't taste as good if you had the like extra movie theater, popcorn, popcorn flavor, and then you're adding, you know, cookies and whatnot to it. it I think it might just be a little bit conflicting. I've never used that. So I'm not speaking from experience. If you do, let us know because it might be like the most amazing, amazing thing ever. So what about yeah. you eat it right away? Is it, can it be stored? Can you ship it? Yes. It so easy? yeah, absolutely. So you can store. So the one thing about meltables is that they will set up on their own. So you don't necessarily have to put them into the freezer for them to set up. As long as it's, you know, room temperature, which is about 72, 73 degrees, like they will come to, the, the meltables will come to that temperature and they'll, they'll set back up. So, um, so after you've made these, you know, you can, you can leave them in the bowl. I like to put them on like a sheet pan and just kind of, um, see I'm doing the motion here, <laughs> like toss them onto the sheet pan and then just, set them and just let them out and let them um, come to temperature. But if you were going to, um, you know, depending upon what you use with them, like I have, I see no reason why you couldn't freeze it as long as it's airtight. And as far as shipping goes, I would just make sure if you're shipping it in the warmer months to, you know, put in like a gel pack or dry ice, depending upon how into the shipping you are. Um, just so that it doesn't melt in transit. And then as far as presentation goes, you know, it might like get your bag all kind of smeared and whatnot. But um, I mean, I guess that's if you're 
shipping it to like a customer. But I mean, if you're just sending it to mom or sister or friend, they probably won't care. They're just going to be happy that you thought of them and that you took the time to make something delicious to share with them. So, so yeah, does that, I hope that, I hope that answers your question. Does that answer your question? That does. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So the next thing I want to show you is, um, I'm going to actually just, we're just going to melt some more of the, this cocoa flavor. And as I was mentioning earlier, meltables are a, uh, confectionery coating um, when you see them that look like chocolate they typically have cocoa in them so they are going to have a cocoa uh, flavor profile and um, and as you know I'm a chocolate girl and I love I love our cocoa I love our cocoa multiples they're so delicious one thing while this is heating up um, you can see even on our packaging, we made sure to give you some ideas that you could use um, for these meltables. So one of the things that's awesome to do is just get some fresh berries, you know, or bananas, melt it in a bowl and just dip it right on in and just let them set up on parchment or wax paper. Um, we have a little chocolate covered strawberry on here again to just kind of give you some ideas of how many different ways you can use these. And um, they're so, so, so good. So the next thing I'm gonna show you, so simple, um, but just to give you, you know, just to give you an idea, there is a, there is a store. So that was about 30 seconds. And um, again, just because I had been using it before, oops, casualty. Um, I don't, it, it was a little bit warm. There still was some meltable on the ring. So I just put it in there for about 30 seconds. Again, trying to avoid overheating them and having the meltables seize up. If that does happen to you, you can um, just add a little bit of vegetable oil and it should smooth it back out. But what I was starting to say is there is this store at a local mall here just in Salt Lake City and it's this beautiful candy store and the packaging is just impeccable and gorgeous. And anyway, and I splurged and bought myself some chocolate covered pretzels, <laughs> excuse me, chocolate covered potato chips, not pretzels, potato chips. And I just, I had, I had never like done, made them myself because at first I was like, wait, I've heard people eat of these, but I've never actually eaten of them myself, but they just looked so good and so beautiful. And then I ate them and I, then I shared them. And then I just thought, you know, let's just make some ourselves. And it's not something I would recommend eating every day of your life, but I mean, they're, they're pretty darn, pretty darn yummy. So I just, again, going along with things that you can use, you can use to make these multiples, you know, shine or just kind of be like the focal point or a little bit of the intrigue. Um, I just went to the store and grabbed some of my favorite salty, salty things. And it's so simple. Um, you're just, you just dip it and then you can just put them on the parchment paper. Um, the other thing you can do is again, how I was mentioning like with the different colors, you can use different flavors of meltables. You can drizzle, um, you know, and know that you're making something that someone spent about $18 <laughs> on the little canister of chocolate dipped uh, potato chips which sounds outlandish, but I mean, it, once you try them, you'll probably, you probably would have done, would have done the same. Here are some other, like, again, just salty, salty, sweet combo. Here are some like kettle chips. Um, the other thing you could do is similar to the, here, let's grab a bowl. 
similar to like the popcorn, instead of like hand dipping them, you know, you can just toss, we'll do a little mixture. That sounds like, sounds great. So these are kettles. These are like little corn chips. These are kind of like stiffer potato chips. And anyway, you can just pour these in and then kind of coat them. So then they'll have like less of obviously like that clear, you know, line of having been dipped and, uh, and just kind of be more, it's a little messy. Megan, yeah. melting the meltables, do you have to consider putting them in a glass container or can they be melted in plastic? No, they can be, they can be melted in plastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I like to use the clear ones so I can, so you guys can see, <laughs> but they don't have to be, they definitely don't have to be melted in, in glass. Um, so you can see a difference right? How these were obviously dipped by hand. This was just kind of more tossed. One thing, I don't know, call me crazy, but you could just kind of get a little, um, little crazy and like mix some of these things to be like one, you know, one big mixture. Um, and like I said, I think the fun thing about the meltables or even just this kind of some of this stuff is that just give yourself freedom to just try. And, you know, maybe you have, maybe there's like a cereal that you you don't, you haven't gone through yet, or, you know, like, oh, your kids don't really like it. Um, but, you know, you have a little gathering coming up or you want to take a little treat to a friend or whomever. Um, it's just have fun with it. You can totally just do any kind of mix and it will turn out so, so yum. Um, and I think it'd be so fun to hear, like if you guys come up with ones, just some, some of the things that, that you came up with that you thought worked really well together, like different flavor combinations. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you was, let's see, I still have some of my um, melted cocoa flavor. And I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm gonna grab a sheet pan and I'm gonna just pour the, oops, okay. I'm just gonna pour out this melted meltables onto this parchment paper that's on top of a sheet pan. Okay, so I did this in a couple of classes ago where we were showing things that, things you could do with multiples like for cake decorating. And this is just a really, really, really simple way of, you know, creating a little bit, like we call it like a bark, right? Where you, um, you know, it could just be the multiple in and of itself with like the fun flavor. You can add sprinkles to it you can see what, what we're going to do here in just a minute um, to kind of switch it up just a little bit, but it's honestly so simple. Okay, so all I did was pour that on the parchment, and I'm using like an offset spatula. I'm just kind of um, moving it back and forth to make it a little bit smooth, but for the cake decorating class, I said, oh, you just, you know, just take some sprinkles, sprinkle it on. You can take some um, um, some candy or whatever and put it on there and then you put it in the fridge or freezer really doesn't matter just as long as it gets to the point where it's like set up again since it does set up at room temperature and you didn't want to throw it in the fridge or freezer you could just let it sit for as long as it would need to to kind of get um, get set up but um, but I just throw it in in a cooling agent because it goes faster <laughs> so I'm going to do a little bit of TV magic just because my daughter's not here to be my assistant to go run this into the fridge, but you'll see I've got, let's see, so this one, let's just say 
here's our setup piece of cocoa meltables. And again, if you wanted to use it for cakes or on top of cupcakes, you could break it and you know you could put it in the top. But I had this kind of over the top idea of adding some, okay, so this is some frosting I made and it tastes like, uh, it tastes like vanilla ice cream. So I'm just spreading some on here like this. And then I'm gonna take some sprinkles and some waffle cone chunks. And we're just gonna sprinkle some on. And then, let's see, we'll put some of our uh, meltables in a piping bag and drizzle some over. So normally, if I had my daughter here, if I had a fridge right here, I would like put it in at this point because the goal is to just kind of have the frosting like set up. And you know with buttercream where it gets like crusty, not in a bad way, <laughs> in a good way, like it gets, um, like it just sets up and it's not runny. And this particular recipe is like stiffer. You know, I knew I was going to be putting it on top of meltables to kind of make this like little frosting chocolate, you know, ice cream cone bark type thing. So I made sure that I added a little bit more uh, powdered sugar so that it was a little bit stiffer. And, um, and then you, I would put it into the fridge at this point, just to kind of let it again, let it set up. But we're gonna put these meltables in a piping bag. Give them oh, about 30 seconds in the microwave. And then I'll just come on top and drizzle the top of that. Maybe add a few more sprinkles. And then you can, you can break that and serve it as, you know, just a little decadent, for sure, decadent treat, absolutely. And um, again, a little unconventional, but, but it tastes good <laughs> and it's fun and it's easy. And you might already have all the things that you would need to make it in your pantry at home. So do we have any, uh, yeah. We've got a couple questions. Yeah. How long can you store the cocoa melts for? Oh, there, it's like two years, I want to say, is the, maybe a year, for sure a year. The best buy on here is edged off, but yeah, as long as they're, as long as they're airtight and meaning like, you know, in a, clo in a plastic bag that closes or in like a Tupperware type thing that seals it. Um, and you'll want to store, store it, excuse me, in, um, in like a cool, dry area, mm -hmm. then they should last you a, a long, long time. Okay, so you see how it, it was in there for about a minute total. And I'm going to snip, just do a little snip of, off the top. Now that I, yeah, so, and I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, like that, and then always more sprinkles, it's how, it's a rule I live my life by, <laughs> and you can, can you see, okay, it's just like this yummy chunk of goodness so we have again if I could throw that in the fridge it would set up and then you could even you could even score it like it won't be a perfect break but um but you definitely it's hearty so you definitely can break it into like the sizes about probably that you were wanting if you had you know in your mind that you wanted them only to be bite size or or whatnot so sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you you said there were oh, some sorry. questions 
<laughs> people asking about your icing recipe that tastes like vanilla ice cream. Um, okay. Happy to share it after the class to the attendees. Yeah. Do you have it posted anywhere on your site? So no, I don't have it posted. Um, but I can give it to you. Okay. I can, I can send give it, it out to, you. to the attendees afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Happy, happy to share the love for sure. For sure. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Oh, oh yeah. Any other questions? I was just having, <laughs> having ideas. That's all. Yeah, those are, those are pretty much the questions so far. Okay. Awesome. So one other little technique I will show you. Let's see, so here are some of the red meltables. I'm gonna put those in the microwave. And let's see, I'm gonna put these in together. We're just gonna dip some cookies. So one of the things I like to say, and I apologize if you've already heard me say it, but I feel very strongly about it, that it doesn't take much to take something that's ordinary and make it extraordinary. Just a little bit of effort, a little bit of creative juice, um, and you can just take something that is seemingly generic or ordinary and just kind of make it over the top and so fun. So I made some cookies and if you're not a baker, that's totally fine. You can just go buy some. You can, um, or you can buy some dough and, you know, from the grocery store and just make the pre-made dough on your own. If you love to bake, you can whip up your own batch of cookies. And then these melts are so fun to play with. Megan, can you tell us if the if the colored meltables are they chocolate, are they white chocolate, or are they food coloring? Oh, the like the actual like where does the color come from? Yes, probably more so, so about what the taste is. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's so the colored meltables are a like a vanilla, just like a vanilla flavor. I. I I don't know how to describe it any other way other than that, but it's so, so yummy. Um, it doesn't taste, I know that uh, white chocolate is kind of polarizing for people, uh, which I've learned um, throughout the years of owning bakeries. And you know, you either like love that flavor or you like despise it. And I will say, I don't think that our meltables taste like overly like what, like a white chocolate taste per se. I think it's just this really smooth, creamy, it's so good, but it's pretty, it's pretty neutral. It's just like, um, just like a really creamy, smooth vanilla flavor, which is awesome when you're using it for other things because it's not gonna have, um, it's not gonna have like a really intense flavor that's potentially super polarizing to people. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Can you tell us any differences in working with the multiples versus working with like a Nestle chocolate, something that you would find in the grocery store? Like, are there any benefits that we should be aware of or consider? Yeah, so I feel, so the multiples because of just their composition, and I'm, I'm no scientist <laughs> or, or uh, it claim to be anything as such, but because they, because they're not, like actual chocolate, they're gonna behave a lot. Uh, you'll get along with them a little bit better, if that makes sense. Um, chocolate, like chocolate chips, because they're, again, because they're like actual chocolate, um, there's different properties and different things in terms of like tempering them, heating, cooling, making sure that the crystals stabilize and that's what makes it smooth. I mean, there's a lot of like sciency type things that 
that have to happen in terms of working with chocolate. Um, so I think that these, as far as like ease of use, I think they're really, really easy to use because you're not having to deal with um, anything like super technical in that regard. Uh, I think like our cocoa ones have, and we have like a dark cocoa one too. It does have actual cocoa in it. And so it has like a chocolatey flavor. But again, you have the benefit of, um, because it is like a confectionery coating, you kind of have the benefit of the ease of use of them in the microwave. And um, so, I know, I hope that, I hope that helped that answer some questions. We good? We're good. Oh, okay. I got I got ear pods for my birthday and I for a minute there I thought I had done something and like you couldn't hear me. <laughs> so okay. Um so all I've done is melted two different colors in the microwave. And I'm just gonna show you a simple way to make something ordinary, a cookie that maybe you made yourself, maybe you didn't. And um, we're just gonna, here, I'll point it this way. We're just gonna dip it in here halfway. I just kind of like to scrape the bottom of it. And then I'm just gonna set it down. I'll do that with a couple more. Um, let's see. All right, so similarly, you can take, now yeah, don't, be, don't be scared to use chocolate chips, with, chocolate chip cookies with our, with our meltables or don't be concerned about covering up your beautiful, beautiful chips with meltables. So again, I love like color coordinating for parties or gatherings or celebrations or we, you know, for companies or, you know, there tends to be, in gatherings, you know, obviously there's a purpose, there's a specific occasion, and sometimes that occasion calls for, you know, a golden anniversary or, you know, specific colors or things that you would want to incorporate. So I'm just taking, like, look how cute. All I did was dip the cookie halfway into the meltables, and then I'm just sprinkling some of our sprinkles on the top. So fun. Okay, so these ones, so they haven't quite set up yet. And we'll give them just another minute. So we'll do one of these in the red. And it's been so fun to design sprinkles. It's my favorite job I've ever moonlighted before <laughs> because I love uh, just thinking of different color combinations and knowing that there's so many fellow home bakers out there who would appreciate them and have fun with them. So here is one of our um, Sweet Tooth Fairy sprinkle mixes that I'm using just to decorate the cookies with. Okay, so you can see how I dipped it initially in the blue this way. So all I'm gonna do is turn it uh, 90 degrees and dip it again into another color. Oops. And it gives just like a super cool, unique look to the cookie. And now that I'm doing this, I'm thinking, oh, look how fun this would be for like a gender reveal party, right? That little kind of pinkish and blue going. So fun. And then the other thing, like similar to what I had done with the, um, 
with the bark is you can just take the meltables and a piping bag and drizzle them. Drizzle anything really. Even if you have added frosting to it, you could drizzle the top of it with frosting like we had done with our our waffle cone ice cream bark. In fact, let's check on that and see and break it apart. So there's just some fun, yummy, delicious, multiples and frosting and treats. So I hope that something I showed you here will inspire you to, you know, to get creative at home, to go pick up some of the meltables and just look in your pantry, look in your um, kitchen and see what you already have around or, you know, make that batch of cookies and test them out, dipping them in different ways or drizzling them in different ways or, you know, find those sprinkles and just, um, just play around with it because it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun for sure. So are there any questions at this point? Can you talk about some of the molds that you can use for the, the meltables? Yeah. So honestly, any mold, <laughs> any mold will work just great. They, um, Again, they're really, really, really easy to use. They have, they're so smooth. They melt really, really easily. And so they will set up really well in, in any of your molds. Um, I have used them just a few weeks ago. I, you know, I got a cookie cutter and used that as my mold to essentially create my friend's son's name. And then I put those letters like on top of a cake. Um, so anything that can be used as a mold also, like there's lots of fun ice cream, um, excuse me, not ice cream, ice, like ice trays that have different cool shapes. Like you could definitely use those as well and just let them set up. And um, yeah, lot, there's lots, lots you can do for sure. Spray the molds. Pardon? You need to spray the molds to make sure that it releases clean? Um, you, yeah, yes. I mean, I would err on the side of, uh, of spraying them just to be super, super safe. I, I don't think that, like, especially with, like, the silicone ones, I don't think they would necessarily need it because they're so, like, pliable and you can, like, flip them inside out of each other. But, um, but just to be sure, and if you're using plastic ones, like just to make sure that you're not like crunching, a, crunching the molds or whatever, just, just to be safe, so. All right, well, Megan, I want to thank you very much for your time today. I think there's yes. a lot of fun ideas that you've given us and, and really ultimately the, the lesson here to learn is that, you know, just get creative and get fun and go to the grocery store and see what catches your eye and what kind of flavors would, would mix in well and, and totally. use the vegetables to get creative and take something that is, you know, simple and ordinary and turn it into yeah. something that's fun. So absolutely. Yeah, we offer, um, we offer all, all of Megan's products on michaels.com. Um, I sent out the link to a few different, um, a few of the different comments on here as well, but we also okay. have a variety of other classes that we're offering. We are adding classes um, to Michael's all the time. So check back pretty often where you guys registered for this class. It's michaels.com slash classes. And that's where we show what's coming up next. I know we've got a baking class next Monday and then I can leave one on Tuesday as well. So awesome. lots of fun things that we are, you know, we like to hear like what you enjoy making. What do you want to learn? And and um, keep the communication coming to us. And then we'll go out and work with folks like Megan to provide these classes for everyone. So we hope you enjoyed it and everybody learned something new and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Megan. Thank you. All right, bye guys. Bye.